Hi, I'm Mitch Mitchell. So I want to tell you a little story and then give you some advice and then do something at the end. So a couple of weeks ago, I had lunch with someone local. He's a good guy. And we were talking about websites and how to get promotion for websites. So I asked him, so if you had to talk to someone about how to promote their website, what would you tell them? And he admitted he was not a big, you know, he knows how to design, but he's not really big in SEO, whatever. But he said, well, I would probably tell him we have to improve the design of the website. And then we probably need to do some keywords. And I can't remember what the third thing was. And I said, well, I got to tell you the truth. That won't really get a lot done. And when he asked me why, I said, well, think about it. I mean, if you don't have anyone coming to the website, what's design going to do for them? And as far as keywords, sure, you can add a lot of keywords to a new website, and it'll rank well for a while, but then it just kind of gets dull and, you know, no one cares anymore. The search engines stop coming because there's nothing new. So I said what I would do, and here's my top three ideas, and, you know, you can either agree with it or disagree, but trust me, these things do work. They're not going to get you to number one most of the time, but you know what? They will work and keep your website, you know, viable. The first thing you do is you add a blog to your website. Now, you're going to ask why you do this. Because what happens is you create a website and the search engines come say, hey, look, there's something new here. So they send out their bots and they rank you for a little while and you know you get that initial boost then it notices hey there's nothing new here whatsoever and they start sending out the bots fewer and fewer times and eventually your website basically disappears because there's no reason for them to come however if you can add a blog to your website and even post just twice a month trust me on this just two articles a month you're not going to rank high, but you're probably going to rank better than a lot of other people in your industry, unless your industry has to do something with websites. <laughs> or, you know, if you're running like, a, a, well, if you a make money blog, for instance, whatever, you're, you're going to get killed if you're only writing, you know, that little twice a month. But if you're a business like I write for my accountant, we trade services, and I write basically two articles a month for her. And her website is the highest ranked accounting website in the Syracuse area. Now, she's small, so the big boys are still going to get, you know, the majority of the business. But for small websites, hers is the highest ranked. As a matter of fact, hers is ranked higher than all the big websites. They just don't need the publicity as much. So that's the thing that blogs can do for you. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that you have to be willing to market yourself. Now, you've, I have learned over the time that a lot of people don't ever really think about marketing themselves. But you can market it. You can market it on Facebook if you want to. You can market it on Google+. Me personally, I love Twitter. I think I've mentioned that previously. So I market my uh, basically my blog posts, which are connected to my business website. So I market these things and it helps to keep my website ranked well. And my main keyword, which I'm not going to tell you because I mentioned on my other blog, uh, other website, but this one doesn't care. Anyway, for my keyword phrases that I'm looking to be found in, I'm in the top five. I used to be number one. I was number one for years. And then other sites who don't even do the work passed me by. But still, I'm always in the top five. So you have to be willing to market yourself. And you don't have to overdo it. You just have to be willing to market it. But number three, I find this very important. You have to be willing to share the content of others. Now, some people don't really understand what this concept is. So they're just me, me, me all day long. But when you share other people's content and you make sure that their hashtag is in there or their, their Twitter handle, for instance, if you're doing it on Twitter, if you share that, People love seeing their names. They love seeing that you've shared their stuff, and then they start sharing your stuff. Or at the very least, they may retweet you're putting their thing out there, but now your name is associated with all the people they're connected to. And so that helps you to get some notoriety as well. And if those people come to your website, then it's going to enhance your website. So, you know, those are just the first three. Yes, there's a ton of other things that can be done, but those are probably the top three things that I would mention to somebody. And if you don't have that kind of time to do it, either to write the stuff or to promote it or whatever, you know what? Hire somebody. Um, I recommended one of my friends who was already using someone in another country. I said, well, just have that person do a few more things for you. Now, me personally, you know what? I'll tell you the truth. 
I'm in the United States. I would rather that they hired someone here, but you know, I'm I'm not paying the bill. <laughs> so if they can find someone who they're not really paying all that much money to, who can do a bunch of work for them, fine and dandy. Me personally, I do my own thing, but if I wasn't doing my own thing, I would look to hire someone in the United States just because I'm like that. So those are my three quick tips as far as if you're looking to increase your website's viability and presence online. So I've gotten that out of the way. I got the first part out of the way. And now if you saw the thumbnail, we're going to look at these. As you can see, these are the uh, filled cupcake Oreos. I really never wanted to buy these. I had no plan on ever buying them. And then they showed up at Wegmans again, and I said, okay, I'm going to do it. So I figured I would share it the first time opening with you. Let's see what it smells like. <sighs> okay, <laughs> I already have a bad feeling about this <laughs> because I don't like the way it smells. No, that doesn't smell appealing at all. Okay, um, that's what the middle is like. Okay. Um, no. No. Okay, I'll tell you truthfully. I'm not a major fan of this. It's okay, but, um, I will not be craving this at all. I can't even tell you why I don't like it. But probably after I didn't like the smell... It probably just killed everything else for me. But that's kind of where I'm standing right now. So I'm not crazy about it. I'll probably finish eating them. <laughs> but, well, I don't know. You know what? I'm known to throw stuff away. We shall see. But this is, like I said, the fudge of the filled cupcake Oreo. Hey, it is what it is, I guess. Anyway, I'm Mitch Mitchell. Let me know what you think about the three tips that I just gave. If you've tried these Oreos, let me know what you think about these things. Ugh. Anyway, y'all take care. <laughs>